Hello and welcome everybody to my channel Omni Bio Entrance. Today we will be discussing National Entrance Screening Test NEST 2020 Session 1. I will be discussing only the biology section. Now, three given polypeptides PQR of the same size and same PI 7.2 have a single aspartic acid in each of them. If polypeptide in polypeptide P, the aspartic acid residue is on the surface. In polypeptide Q, it is surrounded by negatively charged residues, whereas in polypeptide R, it is deeply buried in a hydrophobic core. PKA of the side chain carboxylate of free aspartic acid is 3.65. The polypeptides are in a buffer of pH 7.4. The change in PKA of aspartic acid side chain carboxylate in the polypeptides P, Q and R is respectively. In the first case, the pKa value of aspartic acid will not change as it is on the surface. In the second case, in the hydrophobic interior of protein molecules, the pKa values may shift to 7 or even higher. The same effect occurs if a negative charge is placed nearby, allowing them to function as proton donors at physiological pH. So the answer is, remains the same in P, modest increase in Q and greater increase in R. So option 1 is, you are provided with a bacterial culture generation time of 30 minutes in exponential growth phase. You transferred an aliquot of this culture to a fresh medium which now contains 3.2 into 10 raised to 6 cells per ml. Considering that this culture does not exhibit a lag phase and growth conditions remains unchanged, the cells per ml that you would obtain after 1.5 hours of incubation is. I have the answer is 2.56 into 10 raised to 7 and I have uh, explained it in my next slide. 2 raised, 2 raised to number of generations that is n into initial number of bacteria is equal to total number of bacteria present after n generations. In one point, this is the formula for calculating it. In 1.5 hours, bacteria will divide 3 times. So, n is equal to 3. So, n is equal to number of generation. So, 2 raised to n will be 2 raised to 3 that is 8. So, 8 into initial number of bacteria that is 3.2 into 10 raised to 6 cells per ml. You will get total number of bacteria present after n generations. So that will be 2.56 into 10 raised to 7 cells per ml. Now next one. Given is a diagram representing the annual mean temperature and the annual mean precipitation in three biomes P, Q and R on a planet. All the animals living in these biome together can be largely grouped into two major classes, regulators and conformers. Regulators are animals that can regulate their body temperature and conformers are those animals whose body temperature changes as per the environmental temperature. <laughs> Assuming that each animal do not have any specialized adaptation, the correct statement would be. Here, P represents tropical forest. You can see the annual precipitation is 150 to 400 and 4, 406 I think or 450 I think no, to 400 150 to 400 that is the mean actual precipitation in centimeters for R the annual precipitation is only till 100 and Q is less than 50 so P represent a tropical rainforest and Q represent desert and R represent an arctic and alpine tundra now, Bergman's rule states that body size is large in cold climates and small in warm climates. So, regulators with both large and small body can be found in P. But only those with large body size because um, R is a Arctic or Alpine tundra. So, it is a cold climate and it will have those with large body size can be found in R. So, option 2 is correct. Then next, a student was given three unlabeled permanent slides. In an effort to identify these specimens, she places the slides under the microscope and marks the following features. 
unicellular two well defined nuclei ciliated without cell wall so unicellular and two well defined nuclei and no cell wall uh, it represents paramecium from the given options and not amoeba then unicellular chloroplast unicellular chloroplast one nucleus biflagellated with a cell wall so we having chloroplast so chlamydomonas and it is unicellular and has only a one nucleus then next one unicellular on one nucleus non flagellate with a cell wall that is saccharomyces it is unicellular and non flagellate so option 2 is correct now next one if the mature egg cell of a diploid organism is has six chromosome then the total number of chromatids in the anaphase 1 of meiosis would be so during prophase and meiosis uh, metaphase 1 of meiosis 1 a chromosome consists of a tetrad that is four chromatids or four dna molecules so here it will be 6 into 4 so that will be 24